previously on Super Idols RPG. Angie and Jaden got swarmed with fans at school on their first day back after the gig, a consequence of neither having secret identities. Even more fans swarmed the club's first new member audition, where Lucia showed off her performance skills and flashy illusion powers. Once things quieted down, the group accepted Lucia into Rhythmics and brought her to their secret club room, where they filled her in on their top priority, rescuing Anne from Crimson Signal. Ever the good delinquent, Lucia immediately volunteered to steal blueprints for the Crimson Signal building from her father, and Karen volunteered to reach out to her online contacts for a tech-savvy friend who can help break into their computer systems. Just normal idle things, as always, on today's episode of Super Idols RPG. Hey there everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. Luca. Hello. And Liv. Hello. And today we have a special guest player who we'll be encountering a little later in the session. You may know her as Crash Override and Mandrake on the podcast Unlabeled AP, an all-trans masks campaign played with the Phoenix Academy playset. Faye also designs games over at Magical Girl Kira on itch.io. It's Alice Kira, everybody! Welcome to the show! Yay! Hi! Yay. <laughs> Hello! How's everyone? <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. Doing great. Doing great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're not encountering your character right away, but there is definitely a um, a point where you'll get to be brought in, let's say. Sounds great. Okay, so partly for the audience's sake and partly for Alice's sake so we can catch everybody up, we had our new member Lucia, aka Trixie, audition to join the club, and she passed with flying colors. But more importantly, you all filled Lucia in on the whole Crimson Signal kidnapping Anne situation, and understandably decided that that's looking like it should take priority over everything else right now. So how are the rest of y'all going to approach planning for this? Are you just going to keep planning on Disc Idol later the same evening or wait till the next meeting to talk more about it? Like, what's the go plan here, do you think? I think Jaden is currently watching the third heist movie of the day and he's trying to just like understand what kind of job he would fit in best and he's like packing his bag of like things he assumes would be useful for kind of sneaking and I said I guess breaking and entering him into a most likely highly secured building. None of it actually looks useful but he is pretty sure it's all going to be useful. Um, you'd notice that he's not very used to breaking rules. So he's trying his best to be the best he can be <laughs> right now. He's doing his research. Oh my god, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to name any of that stuff up front? Or do you want to like keep it vague so that you have an opportunity to say, like, I totally packed this? Later. Yeah, no, I want to keep it vague. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mark, uh, you know, how much load you're taking on your Blades in the Dark character sheet? <laughs> you can decide what that is later. Yeah, I think Vivi's been practicing her body transmutation power that has come up once before that she doesn't really like to use, but it seems like this is probably going to come up again. So she's just been standing in front of a mirror and trying to control how tall she is and uh, body shape and shape of her face and is just kind of frowning the whole time, but uh, with an attitude of like, well... I don't like to use this power and I don't like people to see it, but it's probably going to be useful so I should, you know, be able to control it. That's fair, that's fair. I think since you stated up front that you are practicing this use of your power, I'm going to give you a plus one if it comes up to like a, any move involving your transmutation power during the heist. You can have one instance of a plus one with that power. All right. 
Okay, well, Angie um, is looking up the most important thing that you look up when you're doing this kind of thing, and that is what to wear uh, during a heist. So she's basically looking up the best outfit that she can, um, one, look good, but also be low key. And it's been pretty difficult, so she spends quite a bit of time doing this for some reason. (laughs) But once she's got the outfit, she starts trying to see if she can dig up some dirt on Mr. Cervantes. Yeah, just seeing where she can find out with him specifically and hopefully why Crimson Signal was started and basically any kind of dirt that she can find if there is any. Because, like, well, if we can't break in, maybe we can blackmail him (laughs) into giving Anne back. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I think, again, the best move we have to represent that to see how well that goes is industry espionage. So why don't you roll that for me? Sure. I'll just read the move again because we we haven't used it in a bit. So industry espionage. When you investigate with the intent of either gaining an edge in the super idol world or solving a super idol related mystery, roll plus superior. On a 10 plus, ask two. On a 7 to 9, ask one. On a 12 plus, one of your questions can be anything you want, not just one from the list. And on a miss, either your investigation attracts immediate unwanted attention, or you have to give something up to get out unnoticed. It's a hit. All right. So yeah, so you get an eight on that. So you get to ask one of the industry espionage questions. Okay, so I am going to ask, what is something that is being concealed? Okay. Hmm. What what can what juicy stuff can I give you here? <laughs> I think what you find as you search through like the usual suspects like LinkedIn or like any other business type sites or like news that he might have been involved in, you do find that he has been involved in several businesses prior to this, all of which seem to have been involved in some borderline shady legal trouble, but he always manages to evade prosecution in some way. And you find some rumors on some sites that he may have some ties to organized crime, but nobody has been able to pin anything on him. Okay, so uh, she has got her notepad out, and along with a bunch of stickers around the borders, she is writing down, you know, all this information so is there like any particular crime syndicate that she was able to pin down? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Just because, again, nothing's been able to stick, so nothing that concrete has turned up yet. Just he yeah. always seems to be on the edges of some shady activities, conveniently. Okay. Like one of his past businesses, he worked for maybe another similar technology company, let's say education technology, because he always yeah. seems to go for like these companies that look great and look very benevolent on the outside. Yeah. So he worked for an education technology company that got itself into a little trouble with regards to uh, fixing grades for certain students, especially oh. in like high income areas. Yeah. Uh, but he was able to plead that um, he was unaware of the activities of the employees who were involved in this. Okay. So that's a lead. She's definitely going to consider following. But yeah, other than that, she's picked out her outfit and uh, she's Mm -hmm. got this information. So she's probably going to talk to everybody else and see if that's something that we can pursue later. Yeah, I'll be very excited to see what everyone's heist outfits are. (laughs) But I'm not going to lie, she's definitely spent more time on the outfit than the research (laughs) part. Fair. So if you get a plus one on anything, it will probably be to do with like sneaking around. Because hopefully your outfit would help with that, at least. (laughs) I hope so, too. All right. And how's Alan slash Queen Bee preparing? Uh, Well, Alan has been reading up uh, on uh, Crimson Signal Catalog, trying to memorize the products and the specs, uh, just in case they have to, like, charm their way. People like it when you take an interest. Oh, yeah, yeah. What time are you all trying to sneak into the building, by the way? Like, during the day or at night? Well... I think we should discuss that. Probably, yeah. So yeah, if you're like looking through specific pieces of technology or products, um, I, I'll give you a plus one to investigating or pretending that you know about those. Perfect. Are you looking in- into any of the locations of any convenient hives around the Crimson Signal building area? 
I was actually thinking of bringing my own. Probably for the best. <laughs> Queen Bee just claps her hands and she's like, it's showtime, ladies. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it's like a BYOB, bring your own bees. I'm sorry. That's all I could think shut, of. Up, <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut <laughs> up. I think Lucia is like on her way home from school, she was already figuring out like, okay, what's the best time? What can I do? Like, what is the best way that I'm going to be able to get in and get these papers? Because yes, it's a big family, but I do think that like, at least her dad's office is fairly like, not off limits, but if you're going in there and you're poking your head around, he's definitely going to ask like, what are you doing? Like, What do you want? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so she's trying to like sit here and scheme like, how do I distract dad? What could I possibly do? You know, just warming up for this Crimson Signal heist is really what she's doing. And I think she's decided that the best way, as all ways for a heist, is to create a distraction. So she's going to come home and she's going to choose violence. She's going to figure out a way to get her other siblings to fight and sort something like that (laughs) so that she can sneak into the office and get the goods, if you will. Seems like the kind of distraction she would be good at creating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all about the little things, you know, like scooping up some of Ava's toys as she's coming through, saying hello. I think she also like took one of Matteo's like textbooks and slipped it into Ren's room when she was walking by. But then also <laughs> when she was in Ren's room, she took some of Ren's like like the sketchbook that Rin had opened sitting on their desk, like their latest piece of art. She took that and put it in the bathroom that they all share because like that's wet. So that's obviously going to cause chaos. Oh no. (laughs) She didn't wet it. She didn't like ruin it, but she put it in a precarious place. Just little seeds here and there. Just a whole bunch of, why did you touch my stuff? Blah, 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 blah. (laughs) That's what she's looking for. And I think that's fairly successful. You know how your family operates. You know what will set them off. So I'm not going to stick a wrench in that. I think that is going off fairly well for now. Lovely. So you've got Teo yelling like, where's my textbook? And Ren yelling like, who put my thing in here? This is is very, like, (laughs) precarious. This is a danger zone for this kind of piece. Yeah, that's fine. Ava's crying and running to Tony. (laughs) Tony's like, what did I do? I didn't do anything. The worst part is I don't even think she put the toy anywhere. She just took it. Like, it's completely (laughs) missing. (laughs) And I think she basically waits until her dad has to come in and play referee before she tries to go and sneak in. All right. So I think you're not going to have too much of a problem with that specifically. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and roll industry espionage. All right. Let's see. Nice! Okay, cool. I got an 11. Very nice. In the move, you have the list of questions. Which two would you like to ask? I'm going to ask, what here is most useful or valuable to me? Because, like, obviously we want the plans, but there's, like, a lot of stuff involved in business and, like, building planning and engineering and stuff like that. So what Mm -hmm. is the most useful uh, or valuable to me? And then also, what is something that's being concealed? It's probably going to be the same thing, honestly, for both questions. Okay. Because you're looking for around your dad's home office and trying not to make a lot of noise, and there is just a bunch of paper everywhere. But it doesn't seem like he has any like actual like plans out on his desk or out anywhere at the moment. At least nothing that looks like it's related to what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. So you're you're searching around through all these papers and in drawers and whatnot, like what what can I do? And the computer is like locked. You can't get into it and you finally after some digging around what you find is a sticky note tucked away in the back of a drawer and the sticky note has some what look like password hints on it okay so you think your best shot might be to try and get into your dad's computer and see if you can find the plans there yeah sure yeah I'm a teenager I know all about computers I know computers better than my dad let's go (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so this doesn't have the passwords themselves on them, but there are a couple of, like, hints for different passwords for different things. Okay. Hmm. 
what I will let you do is I will read you what the hints are and I will either let you actually try and guess the password. You'll have three attempts before you're locked out or <laughs> I'll let you roll superior to see if you successfully guess the password. Okay. It depends on how smart with passwords you feel. What are the hints first? Because I live the player and so into the hints. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The main one you're looking at, it looks like the, the main desktop password is mm -hmm. um, kid nix hashtag, like just the pound sign, ever exclamation mark. Kid nix hashtag ever. What? <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> See, Aaron was like, you want to play a tricky character? We can get tricky. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you don't think you can figure it out yourself, you can let Lucia try and figure it out with a roll. Because she might be more tuned in to whatever your dad's logic here is. Oh, totally, totally. We're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I will roll superior. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There we oh, go. No. That's a five. <laughs> yeah. So you're thinking like, <laughs> what is <laughs> she thinking? Kid the Nix is is he like, what is it like Nickelodeon or like the the or Stevie? Is Nicks it like or like dinosaurs? Did he misspell kicks and like, is it a reference to like shoes? Like what is happening? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you're trying to figure it out, and you're, you've entered a couple of different ones and haven't gotten it so far. <gasps> oh, wait. I live the... Wait, I just had an idea, but okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, you still have... I'll say you have one guess left if you okay. want to actually try it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I put in all of the siblings' nicknames, like all of the kids' nicknames, hashtag ever, exclamation point? You know what? That's close enough. I'm going to let you get it. What it, yes. what it is, is the siblings' nicknames, the number four, and then ever exclamation mark. So it's oh. Tail, Ren, Loose, Tony, Ava, Forever. Aww. <laughs> what a corny dad. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that because you had a miss, you do get the password right, yes. but you can hear your dad has settled down the dispute outside quicker than you thought, and you can hear his footsteps down the hall. You have very limited time to find anything. Darn. Okay. Okay. I'm zooming. I'm going through everything as fast as I can. Do you need me to make another roll? <laughs> yes. I, I will actually have you roll another industry espionage here. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I know you're rolling a lot of superior, but this is going to be a very superior heavy session in general, I feel like. It's very true. It's very true. It's very true. <laughs> okay. Just out of curiosity, can I use a move? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Because I have the move criminal mind. Yeah. It's technically assess a situation, but I feel like Indian espionage kind of works. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, cool. Awesome! Okay. Hell yeah! So, the way Criminal Mind works is whenever you assess a situation, or industry espionage, you can always ask one of the following questions, even on a miss. So I can still ask, what here is useful or valuable to me? How could I best infuriate or provoke blank? And what's the best way in and what's the best way past? So I will definitely ask, what's the best way in for, like, all the stuff behind the scenes? Okay. What here is most useful or valuable to me, which is industry espionage, mm -hmm. and I'll still ask what is something that's being concealed here, because I feel like if anything's being concealed, it's going to be in the plans. Okay. So I'll probably answer this in an order as we go through this order of operations. <laughs> totally fine. Totally fine. I know I'm, like, unloading. I got so excited. <laughs> I'm going to say the best way in mm -hmm. is to have enough time to, like, find what you're looking for without your dad like finding you so what i'm actually going to get you to do is that you realize you won't have enough time to actually do that without him seeing you mm -hmm. so the best way to like give yourself that time is to actually transform and use your illusion powers to hide yourself so he thinks the office is empty i'll do that <laughs> i'll say that like you can just do that because yeah. you're, you're getting a general success on your move so you're not, i'm not gonna make you roll for that but if you are transforming you can change your stats if you want Okay, I will raise savior to one and lower my danger. 
Cool, cool, cool. So you, you quickly manage to transform and use your illusion abilities to hide yourself in the shadows of the room. Your dad enters the room. He frowns a little bit as he sees his desk. He sees some papers have been shuffled around mm-hmm. and he looks like, mmm. <laughs> he knows about your powers, but you're doing your very best to like hold your breath and not make noise or do anything. And he finally is like, all right, <laughs> and leaves the office B. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as soon as you're sure that he's far enough away, you can slip out of your disguise or even just keep using it as you continue to use the computer. And I'm going to say your illusion made it look like the computer was turned off, too. Cool, yeah. Probably for the best bet, because um, if he walks back in, it's just easier to still be invisible. So yeah, I'll go in with that. All right. The thing that's being concealed is uh, you're looking for what would be the place where the plans are most likely stored, and you're not finding much in like the file explorer or anything uh, that seems like mostly personal documents Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until you dig a little deeper in the applications and find what looks like an application to access a remote server. Mm -hmm. Probably what's being concealed is the files are in that remote server, probably. Hmm. Okay. And what was your last question again? Um, I feel like I should change it almost because I was going to say what here is most useful or valuable. Yeah, you can. I guess, like, what can I use to find, which I guess is more like, what can I use to access this remote server or get into it or <laughs> whatever? To find your way into the remote server? Uh, you, you Probably just the password hint sheet again, because there is another password here. Okay, cool. Let's hear it. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Maybe I'll be faster on the uptake this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the sticky note hint for... What looks like the name of this application. The hint is Judge Judy's got nothing on her exclamation mark. Okay. <laughs> um, it's uh Gabrielle exclamation point. Or Gabriella. Yeah, close enough. It's Judge Gabby number one exclamation Judge mark. Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> He's so he, ew, what a dork. What if a dork of a dad? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's so cute. He's absolutely a wife guy. He loves his wife. Aww. I love my wife. <laughs> so cute. All right. So you managed to access the remote server. And once you're in there, it's fairly self-explanatory now that you see where everything actually is. And you mm-hmm. manage to navigate through the different companies that he works for. And you find one that's labeled Crimson Signal Plans. Yes. <sighs> you love to see it. <laughs> yes. So just to speed through the rest of this, um, you managed mm-hmm. to locate that document with the plans, you take it and you email it to yourself, and now you have those plans in your possession. Heck yeah. I obviously got invited to the Disk Idol server right away. And by invited, I mean I demanded to be in it. And <laughs> I, I immediately messaged the group, got it, with the like little devil emoji, the like smiley one. <laughs> and you get a message back from Karen that says, righteous. I got something, too. She just sends back the big, like, side-eye emojis, the little (laughs) eyeball ones. She sends a a thumbs up. Nice. And then I leave and go back to my room, still invisible, and detransform there. (sighs) All right. (laughs) I'll just quickly shift your labels back to what they were before. before. (laughs) Thank you. All right, so is anybody else saying anything in the Disc Idol server before the evening is over? I think um, all Jaden sent is a picture of a, like, it looks like a backpack that's been stuffed to the brim, like it can barely hold whatever's <laughs> in it. And he just sends a, a picture of that saying, I've got my hands on some gear too. And that's it. Lucia doesn't even <laughs> respond. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She doesn't even respond. Okay, um, and last but certainly not least... In a private message on Disc Idol between Karen and another party, Karen finishes explaining some information about Crimson Signal and about the current situation with the group's missing member and asks this unknown party, So, what do you think? Are you in? I'm in. Let's do this. I like your attitude. And she gives a peace sign emoji. So this is now 
Tuesday is the next in-game day. So you, you get to school, you go through kind of a repeat of the morning you had on Monday, but the students are a little calmer this morning, partly because they experienced the height of their excitement yesterday, and partly because you managed to successfully intimidate enough students yesterday that they're giving you a little more space. Hmm. Good. It's, it's very much a relief. <laughs> <laughs> So you all managed to make it through your school days, um, I wouldn't say entirely unbothered, but more unbothered than yesterday, at least. Certainly the people who have private identities are completely unbothered, but Angie and Jaden, you don't get as many people coming up to you being like, oh my god, oh my god, can you sign something? Yeah. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> and you make it to the end of the school day. Um <laughs> Are, are people using your new secret way into the club room to get there? Or I guess the people who don't need to use that route don't have to. Yeah, I am. Um, Lucia does any way to feel cool. Yeah, it's yeah, so does Jaden. <laughs> Jaden definitely does as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you can't have a secret entrance and not use it. Of <laughs> so you all make your way more or less at the same time, I'm going to say for convenience sake, towards the club room through the auditorium. You come in through the secret door. And you see that Karen is already there, um, and she's with someone that none of you recognize. Alice, why don't you describe who they see? Okay, so you see Cassandra Tora, Cass for short. She is a dorky little nerd. She's got big, thick glasses, a thick brown braid, wearing overalls over like a collared shirt, kind of nervously fiddling with her phone because she definitely doesn't want people to know that she's here. It'll cause a lot of problems with the Fort MacArthur Idol Club that she's a part of if it gets out that she's over here and she doesn't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, if anybody is particularly familiar with the Fort MacArthur Idol Club beyond like what you've seen of Sagittaria, you might actually recognize her because she is a member, just not one of the performing members. The gasp I let out while I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> Who all thinks you would know enough about the other club to know that? I don't think Angie would have researched outside of the performers on the team. I just think she had someone she hates that she was intent on destroying and a single-minded <laughs> focus to destroy them. So outside of that, she didn't even think that there might be other members <laughs> of the idol club. I think, okay, so this might be a little bit of a stretch, but I think Lucia actually did look up clubs in her area like when she was first getting into high school because she was like thinking like oh maybe maybe I can go here maybe I can go there and eventually her parents were like no all of your siblings have gone here you're gonna go here stop <laughs> um so maybe but you also said she's not performing right. so that's that's the catch well I'm gonna say in order mm. to have the lovely Lucia gasp that you described I'll let you say <laughs> that you know that the Fort MacArthur website is fancy enough that it has pictures of all the members on it. Yeah, I don't know if I can repeat it because I literally was just like, oh, like my <laughs> jaw jaw doesn't go away. <laughs> um, and I think Lucia's eyes like grow really, really wide, but she too is also um, uh, uh, a sneaky, sneaky <laughs> individual. So I think she's just kind of like cut, masks it all up as soon as she can. But she is definitely like shifty mm. eyes thing. This new person. Because I know. I know. All right. So the, everybody else, though, is like, okay, okay. who's this? A new person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jane, Jane just kind of waves like, hi, uh, are you a friend of Karen's? Uh, oh, hi, hi. You're here already. Oh, hi. Yes. Uh, Karen asked me to come here to help you all with something. Yes. I reached into my deep web of contacts and I found... The absolute perfect person to help us with this mission. It does seem like a really deep, deep web, Karen. You have no idea. And she spiders her fingers together and like <laughs> with a knowing smile. Okay. Um. Hi. Right name. Sorry. Um. I, I'm. I'm Cassandra. You can. You can call me Cass. Uh, uh, hello, Cass. I'm Valerie. Hi, Valerie. How are you? 
Good. Cool. Good. Hi, Cass. I'm Jaden. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Any friend of Karen is a friend of mine. Uh, I'm Angie. I'm the pres- co-president. Co-president, yes. Uh, Valerie Co- nods. Co-president, yeah. Co- Karen jabs a thumb at both of them. They're the ones I told you about. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. And Cass nods, like, yes, I've heard much about them from Karen <laughs> and from... What's-her-face? Diana. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So when you say Diana, that probably gets a reaction. Uh, yeah. How do you know Diana? Because she goes to the other school. <gasps> oh. Great. Mm, and Lucia's just like glaring really hard with like her hands on her hips. Now Jaden's glaring as well. It's like... And <laughs> Angie is looking at Karen and she looks betrayed. Like her hands on her <laughs> chest. Like, how could you? <laughs> Cass is going to lean behind Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Karen Karen is happy to be like a human shield in this case. Now don't judge too quickly. I've been talking with Cass for mm, the last few weeks, just be leading up to the school year. We met on a tech forum that I frequent. We've talked quite in depth, and I I think I trust her. She's not like the others over at that club. Valerie has her eyes narrowed, but she says, well, I I trust Karen's judgment. Uh, if she says that you're trustworthy, then I'll, I'll trust you. I think the moment Karen says that she trusts Cass, Jaden's uh, expression lightens up immediately. It's like, okay, cool. Hi, Cass. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming Karen like, gave you all the details? Do we need to run you by anything else? I mean, I can't really say that Karen gave me all the details because I don't have universal knowledge of what she does and does not know. So I can't say qualitatively that she didn't withhold any information, but she did give me a sizable amount of information that I believe is everything pertinent to the issue at hand. Yes, I, I told her about the shadiness with Crimson Signal and Anne being missing and how we think that that might be connected and how we totally want to break into their building and, and find out some things. I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, that covers it. Speaking of shady, it turns out I was doing some very important research last night and I discovered that Mr. Cervantes, the CEO of Crimson Signal, uh, has had like a million businesses before crimson signal and they've all tanked because of some weird shady legal stuff that he managed to get out of and there's rumors that he's connected to the mafia or like a gang or something just i said mafia sounds cooler so i said mafia but (laughs) is you know Whatever the mafia equivalent is in the BC area, it might just be the mafia. <laughs> Idolfia. <laughs> Idolfia. Idolfia. That's not like, that's not like <laughs> vegan cheese. I that was know. a joke. <laughs> I'm not, that's not a not serious vegan joke. vegan cheese. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I love or hate that. <laughs> I, I mean, Please. that was a joke, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe there's uh, like it's a it's a crime sing to kit. Oh no. <laughs> oh, well, I guess now Liv is leaving. Bye. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? You said BYOBs earlier, sir. Get out. Okay, but if it I'm was leaving, just... it's only because you opened the door first. I, I just, you know, want to make sure that we're all prepared for the eventuality you might end up fighting a uh, mafia idol. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my God! Please, it, please let me. Are these puns all in character? By the way, um, I mean, uh, I think mine is. I think mine was. <laughs> if T's was mine was in response. I'm very proud of crime seeing the kid. So oh, yes, so- <laughs> yeah. So this entire like this conversation has been in character. Yes. Is it a Super Idols episode without a bunch of music puns mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at this no. point? It really isn't. No. <laughs> I think Valerie just says completely deadpan serious. We might have to fight a mafia idol. 
<laughs> You've got Karen like quietly giggling in the background. Um, Cass, how are you taking this ridiculousness? Oh, ginormous relief that the suspicion about me being from a different school has passed, and now it's dumb music puns. That's much more comfortable area to be in. <laughs> Good. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think Angie's established, especially in the most recent episode with Liv, that she's very trusting and willing to just invite people to the secret room <laughs> so, without any vetting whatsoever. So, <laughs> yeah. Which I love, because uh, all of you are like, Jaden, don't trust adults. And now- <laughs> uh, But teenagers, fine. She's not an adult, so it's okay. Yeah, she's yeah, a teenager. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody knows that, well, Teens who aren't mean girls are generally more trustworthy. I think uh, Valerie and Angie probably look at each other. Yeah, we do. We do. I was going <laughs> to say the same thing. <laughs> Galaxy brain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are mean girls mean or are they just getting the job done, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, Halfbind. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, yeah, it's a cult classic for a reason, so. I'm not a mean girl, so I don't know anything about that. Oh, you mean different mean girls. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, Cass, you've had to put up with a lot with the mean girls at Fort MacArthur, from what I hear. Oh, yeah. How's training with Tyra? Um, I mean, training's a bit of a strong word for what they let me do for the club. Mostly I'm just running, like, lights and stuff. Yeah, you're not part of, like, the performance unit, right? No, no, I'm not performative enough. What does that mean? Uh, It means that I have issues asserting myself in a way that is not conducive with uh, being on stage. Doesn't one of your girls transform into a horse? Like, you can't be that much worse. Okay, but she's a really pretty horse. Jaden flinches. I mean, it was an okay looking horse. I've I've seen better. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) What your pony when you had that you had when you were five? Uh, yeah, as yeah. A matter of fact. I, I've I've seen a pony. I've ridden. I don't. I mean, I didn't own a pony, but I have ridden a pony, and that was pretty cool looking. I mean, you are from the Shire. Um, and she just turns right back to Cass. <laughs> um, I'm like actually, no, I'm actually from London. <laughs> <laughs> See difference. Seriously, I'm like no, I'm actually from London. I'm- I don't think there's a Shire in England. Right, it's in New Zealand. Isn't that a whole book? I mean, there's a place called Hampshire, and that's so pretty close do, to London. Do we have the plans for the building? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're here for a reason. Uh, yes, I do. I do want to know what your abilities are. Haven't forgotten about that. Because if one of the girls in your idol group transforms into a horse and you're not good enough to be on stage, I have a lot of questions for your management, but that's a different story. Um, and <laughs> Lucia just like pulls out her phone and starts pulling up the emails and the plans and stuff. Um, and she reveals them to everybody and is kind of going through and is like, so this is what I found and there's this and that and, you know, blueprints. They're quite extensive, actually. I'll give you a, a general sense of what you have here to work with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so you already know generally the shape of the building, but you find exactly like it has about 15 floors and a basement. Most floors have a lot of offices, but there's also specific areas on each floor of interest. So like say like on the first floor, you'll have like the lobby that you saw when you were on the tour before. There's also like some board rooms. There's that product show floor that you went to the secret area, whatever's behind that door that Queen Bee identified as you go further up. There's a couple of other areas that you saw during the tour, like the factory area and the R&D area. And then further up, you get more employee-oriented areas, like there's a larger cafeteria uh, and a few places to get food up on the fourth floor. Fifth floor and sixth floor have some testing rooms, which you're not sure what that means exactly. And there's also an infirmary up there as well. Uh, Seventh floor storage, eighth floor presentation in rooms and auditoriums. There are actually apartments between the ninth and 12th floors, which you weren't quite expecting, but they're there. They must be employee apartments, you would gather. There's nothing noted really on the 13th floor. It might be one of those like superstitious 13th floors where nothing important is there. 
14th floor looks like the executive floor, and then the 15th floor is an open floor that's meant to be used for concerts and conventions and has a retractable roof so that it can have open air events up on top of the roof. There's also a swimming pool up there. It seems like our main points of interest are the secret area. Of course, it's a secret. <laughs> it's even on the map, it's not labeled. Like, you see where that door is? There's what looks like a hall, and it looks like there's space back there, but it's not labeled in any way. Then I think the testing rooms and the infirmary could be also potentially interesting. And, uh, I mean, I know superstitious people, but a full floor completely empty? That doesn't sound right to me. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, usually they just name the floor a different number and still put stuff on it. Yes, usually it goes 12, 14, 15. I mean, it's definitely suspicious. I'm also curious about, like, maybe some stuff in R&D. Like, maybe there's information. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the product storage room seems really interesting. Because, like, what if they have a bunch of stuff that they haven't released yet, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. And maybe you can get our hands on one of the new stages. We saw that they were definitely sapping energy. If we can get, mm -hmm. I don't know, more evidence of that. If we can get one and, like try to find out how it works maybe yeah. we can find a way to sabotage them mm -hmm. or at least prove what they're doing that's true mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean I, I feel like sabotaging is like the more fun part so i just jumped to that um i'm also interested in mr cervantes so i would like to see if we can break into his office and steal some files. Ugh, I don't know. I feel like out of anywhere in the whole building, that would probably have the most security. Maybe that could be like a thing we do once we get a main goal and mission, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we're just finding any information to see if if On's there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you um, think I there's both... anything in the basement? Oh, could be. Oh, yeah. When you look at the basement, it looks like it's mainly like what you'd expect of a basement for a large facility. There's boiler rooms, there's sewage, there's janitorial supply areas, there's a break room area for like the janitorial staff, there's equipment storage, that kind of stuff. Um, Maybe we swing by the basement before we leave because there might be something top secret down there, too. I mean, we've all seen those movies where there's something weird going on in the basement and there's an elevator that goes further down. I was watching one of those movies yesterday. That's for how I've been doing my research for this. Um, I think it's, the one I was watching is called um, Into Waterdeep. It's, it's, re it's a really good, really good heist movie. I, I recommend it. Really recommend it. Um, which actually reminds me, from in that, I learned that you should always look for exit routes as well, just in case something goes wrong. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Karen has been studying the map as well while you all are talking. And she turns to Cass while she's looking as well and is like, well, what do you think? What do you make of all this? Is there anything that you think that your stuff would be able to access more easily, do you think? I mean, anywhere there's a computer, I'd be able to get in probably. Um, Polly, and from her like backpack comes a if you've ever played the Mega Man ZX games, which are phenomenal mm -hmm, and you should play them, mm -hmm. it's somewhat reminiscent of the biometals when they're not fused in a form. And I'll drop an image of one into chat just so people have a frame of reference. It's oh. kind of just like a floating face. It's got like a smooth black part that displays like emoji and the little sound waves when Polly's talking. Because um, this is my hard light AI friend, P-O-L-I dot U-X. <laughs> and... Cass is going to turn to them and be like, uh, do you think you could analyze this information and maybe cross-reference it from, you know, traffic photos and stuff from construction, see if the basement is really the basement or if they dug deep enough that there's a sub-basement or even a sub-sub-basement? See if there's anything we're not seeing here. <laughs> Would you like me to unleash my powers, assess the situation, do a idle espionage jig? I would say, uh, since this is technically part of your power set, um, yeah, let's call this an Unleash Your Powers. Awesome. I love how I led with the one I didn't have plus two to. I'm great <laughs> at this game. This is reaching out into the great wide 
net <laughs> of the internet. Oh dear. Hell yeah, I get potential. <laughs> oh, you know what the fun thing about this session is, by the way, since we didn't do start a session, like we were not doing end of session till the end of this session, you don't have any team points. Oh no. And you said that's great? <laughs> that's gonna be It's gonna be fun. Hey, I mean, potential. Uh, that's always nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, so you got a miss on this, unfortunately. So uh, Polly is like ro rolling back and forth and being like, uh, uh, doing their search or whatever mm -hmm. that is that they need to do. Um, and unfortunately, it just pops up a lot of question marks. It seems like whatever information is available about like the basement down there, um, it looks like it's fairly hard to determine like what's there beyond what the plan says is there. All right, so Polly probably comes back with... Inquiring. Inquiring. No additional data found. Which Cass frowns and kind of looks embarrassed to her new frenemies? <laughs> question mark? Because <laughs> that was going to look so cool if it worked, but it didn't work. And they already don't like her that much. Karen reaches up to Polly and like pets it like a little pet and is like, there, there, you'll find something next time. Oh. Jaden doesn't even really care. He's just staring like, whoa, is that like AI? Oh, yes. Uh, this is Polly. She's the uh, personal orchestral linguistic intelligence. Uh, hi, hi, Polly. And he kind of waves at it. I'm, I'm Jaden. And Polly like bobs and flashes and goes, greetings, Jaden. That's so cool. It's really cute. That's that's very impressive. You built this. Angie's leaning in and like looking at it super close. I'm oh, sorry. Are there any lights that it would actually like hurt her eyes if she was in super close? No. I mean, it's hard light, which is fancy and not real. But so like it doesn't like radiate light, but it, you will bump into it eventually. Yeah. Like the technically the crystal gems in Steven Universe are made of hard light. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK. I'm like visualizing something like, um, you know, the little um, drones in Mass Effect that they have, where it just oh, all yeah. looks like light. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how yeah. I'm kind mm -hmm. of visualizing it. But if it's not that, maybe we'll just cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, kind of similar to that. Kind of like maybe if you crossed one of those with a uh, Haro from Gundam. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the big Gundam, yeah. <laughs> that's real cute. Yeah. Yeah, so she's up close looking at it and like, wow, that's so cool. And then she shouts for some reason. She's like, hi, I am Angie. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> Talking to it like it's an Alexa. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I think Cass might actually cover her ears and Polly like rolls backwards and then Bob's right side up again like, greetings, Angie. Cool. And then she's gonna like <laughs> step back. Karen nods. Cass has a lot of cool toys. This is gonna be fun. Did you make that or I guess make her with your, your powers or just and Valerie like waves her hand like she doesn't actually like, or just computer no I stuff? I'm yeah. I'm just really smart. Wow. Hmm. I'm sorry, that was rude. You're not supposed to say you're smarter than everyone in the room but you are she points at Cass like she fixed her family's computer when she was a kindergartner wow what yeah that's pretty cool hmm so if you don't mind me asking what does uh, Pollux do uh mostly Polly helps me work through thoughts if I talk too much and I talk too much to myself too much it gets uh you can like loop in upon yourself and you spiral 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 which isn't helpful um also she sometimes works as an aac if i'm feeling overwhelmed and can't talk to people which thankfully i'm doing good here talking to people hi people um hi you're doing hi. good hi karen agrees you're doing super good I see it. It's all coming together, and I can't. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm absolutely. Like, I always knew about Sagittaria, and then I was like Gemini, and then I was like, oh, Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> Masterful, beautifully done. 
so you've gone over the plans and sort of what's on each floor. You've tried to look and see if there's anything underneath the building, but haven't been able to figure that out so far. It seems like your best course of action is just to head there. Do the plans show cameras or other sensors? They do not. Since this would be more like architectural plans, they wouldn't have that type of electronics information on there. That's going to be an issue. Okay. Do y'all think it's worthwhile, like, transforming before we go? Probably, but before we do, how do we want to do this? Because just uh, what's in the front door is not going to work. At least not transformed. Um, Yes. And, like, we could try going in at night or during the day, or we could try to create a diversion of some sort. I mean, I'm always one for a good diversion. It's my go-to tactic. But... My thought process is maybe going during the day might be a little bit easier since they do Mm -hmm. tours and stuff. And then number two, even when we're transformed, we can change the way that we look. So just because we're transformed in our super idol forms doesn't necessarily mean we have to be walking around looking like super idols. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I could could use my power to look like an adult like someone else like i the other time at the at the bar when, when we snuck in. Uh, like us like one of the security guards maybe uh y- y- yes yes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i mean i could make an illusion too so that's two people i could maybe try to hide all of us too like i know i can make myself invisible and i've never tried doing it for like this many people hmm. but i could try that could be a possibility does does Polly have any kind of can can they extend their their hard light to cover any kind of like invisibility and whatnot or is that beyond the scope of what they can do? Um, I've never tried to do invisibility before. That sounds complicated. I could probably do it if I had time to work on it. Mm. I did bring some stuff that might help like hide us, but we'd have to stay still. Being not seen and moving is really difficult. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, does Pollux have any like hacking capabilities? Like maybe we can just make an ID or something for the guard so we can get where we need to go. And if we're with the guard, we have some kind of explanation for why we're there. I mean, I could probably hack a system. Uh, Polly can help me interface if there's not like a terminal terminal that we can get to. Yeah, you're fairly confident that that's something that Polly would have the ability to do. Yeah. You're a hacker? I mean, hacker's a so, kind of a loaded term. So cool. But every heist needs a hacker. I, I learned that as well. So, okay, if you have the hacker, who's like, do you have that getaway driver? Is that a thing we're going to need? I mean, I can, I have like, well, a fake license at least. You have a fake license? She grins a little bit because she knows the others have seen it, but Lucia yeah. hasn't yet. <laughs> and she pulls out her wallet and goes, ta-da! How good is this fake ID? <laughs> Real good. <laughs> she has sources. Lucia kind of nods, looks at Karen. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to need you to introduce me to your... We're in... We'll talk later. I could hook you up depending on what you're planning to do. It's more just to, like, have it, you know? You never well, know. We'll talk later. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> so we have the getaway driver, allegedly. Do we have the getaway car? <laughs> <laughs> I think do, do, Lucia do just looks at Karen. I, I think we're all looking at each other now, right? Like, that's the silence. We're all <laughs> yeah. just like, is anybody... Karen shrugs. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could maybe... Okay, so I could possibly create a construct and move it it wouldn't be much of a car it'd probably be like a flaming chariot or very rocky carriage or something like that um but it's not guaranteed so completely nondescript could never ever be spotted nobody would ever be able to tell that hey it was. okay do you have a better idea i mean probably <laughs> but hmm. she absolutely offers nothing <laughs> so okay. we don't have a getaway car mm-hmm. but uh one thing we have is uh, a contact of someone who works for Crimson Signal. We do? We could leverage uh, my papaya connection to get in. I mm. 
what I mean is uh, that we could try to create a diversion with Papaya. Seeing as uh, some of us can transform and some of us cannot, we could have part of the team create a diversion and part of the team infiltrate. It could be risky. I kind of am starting to see the appeal of going at night, though, because if we go at night, everybody can go in as is. Yeah, that is true. At least if we go in at night, the major thing we have to worry about is probably like cameras and electronic security and maybe like a sleepy few security guards rather than an entire building of people. That is absolutely true. I'm kind of leaning towards going at night now. I mean, I can probably like sneak out. And our best bet for getting more information might be Jaden's ability to sense elements uh, like like you did before. And that, I, I don't know, I, I imagine that might be easier if there's not a lot of other people and idols around. Oh, yeah. It was hard enough with just dealing with that, the water vapor back then, having a lot of people around. It probably make a, a little harder for me to really concentrate. Okay, so nighttime heist kind of sounds like the move. Uh, is everybody cool with that? Cass, are you able to help us at night with this? Uh, how late at night? Uh, Midnight? I don't know. That just seems like a really heisty kind of time. Yeah. <laughs> In the dead of night mm -hmm. is when we make our move. When the buses aren't running. <laughs> that's, re that's really late. <laughs> Yeah, because then there's like, there's no chance of like a lot of traffic, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, if the buses aren't running, it'll take me longer to get there. We leave when the buses are running, but we take like the last bus of the night. Yeah, yeah. we case the joint, as it's known to say. That's the saying I heard. Yeah. Hmm. And then we can all pitch in for a cab home later. Perfect. Sounds good to me which we will pay cash to avoid having a trail. That's so true, that's so true. I think I have some allowance saved up. <laughs> okay, and once we get there, how do we get in? Oh. Because the doors will be closed. Wait, didn't um, Lucia, and you can't, Jane turns to Lucia, didn't you say you, you can pick locks? Um, I have a very special set of skills that my parents don't approve of. So yeah. Jane kind of just points at Lucia. She can get us in then, right? Yeah. And you can see on the plans that there is the front door and also there are some rear entrances at various points around the back of the building as well. They'll all sort of come into the same general area. We'll probably want to do a back entrance and hopefully there's not too much tech. But even if there is tech and she like looks Cass and Polly, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if the cameras are on, we can just break them. That's how I handle my problems. I don't know if we should break the cameras, but we'll workshop that. We'll workshop that. Ideally, we wouldn't leave any, any trace, but if we get seen, I think that would be time to go loud, as they say. Yeah. I mean, I guess it can be a last resort. I mean, wait, if we get seen, we should have uh, like uh, some fake identities. We could pretend to be like idle villains there to steal the crimson signal tech oh good idea okay so maybe we should come up with code names this is fun okay my my code name is carrie <laughs> my code name is blondie okay okay lady luminous <laughs> 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 Uh, hey Cass, you know what Diana's full name is, don't you? <laughs> oh my god. Do you also know her address, email, phone number, IP address? How is she doing, by the way? Um, yes, 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 yes. Not great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll talk about this later. I, I've been meaning to ask how the new leadership is going, but we'll talk about that later. Also not great. Yeah, I kind of figured. She seems like a... She seems like... A, well, I'm not going to say that word. She seems terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that, that's a word. I I feel like it's kind of a, a little tiny bit my fault. So if 
that's been rough, then sorry, Cass. I mean, it's not better, but it's not like worse. So mm. 12 of one, half a dozen of the other. Wait, no, I don't, I got that I don't think that's. I think, it, I think I get what you're saying. Things are kind of this different, but the same. Yeah. It's like when Microsoft replaced Internet Explorer with Edge, it's kind of the same useless hunk of junk, but with a new coat of paint. Exactly. I get exactly what you mean. That does suck, because you seem really cool. It is a crime that they will not let her perform. She is absolutely one of the most talented members in that club, and it's their loss that they can't see that. Wait, they won't let her? From what I understand. Huh? I mean, I would love to see what you could do. Me too. Can do. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, C- Cass has gotten very quiet and also very red as the people are complimenting. Aww, <laughs> sweet baby. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with it, that's okay too. Uh, but like, totally don't be shy. I mean, you know, what Vivi said. But you shouldn't be shy, you should show us. <laughs> Didn't Diana get really mad when, like, the horse girl transformed into a horse? Like, she didn't want her to turn into a horse, remember that? Every time you said horse, Jane just flinches again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, Diana sucks. But I do get it a little bit. But she also sucks. Yeah. Yeah, like, what were you telling me about, like, how she was trying to force the other members to fit, like, whatever plan that she had for them. For, like, what, what was what was it you were saying? I mean, she assigned everyone new performer names because everything had to fit her theme. Like, alliteration's cool and all, but it's, some of them were a bit much. I don't know. I know, like, Cameron wanted to perform a lot, but she wouldn't let him on stage. And I'm not sure if it's because Cameron's... And c- kind of just, you know, Cameron, or if it's because he's a guy. I mean, it must be rough for him being the only guy in the Idol Club, but also, I don't know. It's not like she explained anything. She just said, this is what they were doing. So <laughs> I shouldn't be telling you all this. This is rude. I shouldn't be gossiping. Oh, um, I'm dripping on your every word, though. Yeah, we're. That's not really gossiping. Absolutely is it? do not mind. Give yeah, all the gossip. Keep <laughs> telling us. Mm-hmm. Everything. Although, don't tell us anything that you think would get you in trouble because we don't want to hurt you either. That's true. Yeah, we don't. Oh, of course. No. Yeah. Of course. But you only get in trouble if you get caught. This is also true. That's true. That's true. Speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> I have a suggestion then, in that case. Mm. Um, maybe we do like a part where we do case it out during the day. Like, a few team members, like, take the tour and, like, look around while other people are outside, like, just looking around, keeping an eye on the guards and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'd be up for that. Then we don't feel like we have to rush right into a heist scene. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We could tell them we could be in the market for some uh, better barriers than the one at the Stormlight. I was also thinking that I could ask my dad if he could get us a tour and I could say it's like for a school project or something. Oh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure I might be banned from inside Crimson Signal. So maybe I'll just like stick around outside and, you know, just kind of walk around, see all the doors and that kind of thing. Well, casing the perimeter is still part of casing the joint. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe I'll see if I can get on the roof and see if there's anything on top. Like, maybe we can break in through the top or something. Mm-hmm. Cassandra, I know you don't like to gossip and I don't want to ask, but this could be useful. What's up with Ashley? Uh, what do you mean by what's up with Ashley? I mean that she has some Crimson Signal connection. She said that her dad knew somebody or... She... Wait, she does? Well, I mean, I, I would hate gossip. Uh, I think you can definitely see some gears turning and plot points connecting in Cass's head with that information. Like, <laughs> wait, what? Well, in her first encounter with Sagittaria, she bragged about uh, getting the new shrinking stages for free. Huh. 
And her dad is Mr. Cervantes. Are you sure about that? Yeah, unfortunately. He, like, bragged about her to me and whatever. Angie is basically going off of, I have a rich dad and I have this free stage. So she's like, her dad's oh, okay. Mr. Cervantes. And that's yeah. really <laughs> Angie's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ashley's last name is Renard. It's not Cervantes. Hmm. Wait, what? So who's her like yeah. rich dad then? I, I assume Mr. Renard. And she's like going to type that up in her phone for research for later. Hmm. Out of character. Uh, and did uh, Kyle tell Angie about uh, Ashley trying to sell the stages? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Because that certainly shows that she's involved. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I guess I assumed because she came around to um, the... I'm part of this underground dance group. We do, like, dance battles and stuff. It's really fun. But uh, anyway, um, my best friend, Kyle, told me that uh, she came around to try and sell them technology and stages and stuff. And uh, he didn't like her vibe, so he asked her to leave. But he said she was really pushy about it. So I just assumed that they were related. Maybe her dad works for Crimson Signal, but isn't Mr. Cervantes? I mean, it is a really big company. Like, and she was selling tech. Maybe he works in the tech stuff. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Well, and I guess there's supposed to be like more than one executive person. I mean, all the offices upstairs can't just belong to Mr. Cervantes, but like, who would, who would work with him for someone who's had like so many failed businesses and just weird things happen? I mean, they could just be like, if he really is part of like the mob or whatever, it could be sort of like a, we go together, we don't go down at all sort of a situation. Um, mm. Maybe he also just works for the company. Like, yeah, maybe. We were going over stuff and we talked about how we want to check out the testing rooms and the other offices and research and development. So maybe we'll find her last name around there somewhere. Yeah, maybe. And I, I want to get back to Cass for a second because I know that, Alice, you said that the gears are turning in her head. What's she thinking about right now? Well, she's thinking about the um, performance at the mall with Absolute Zero showing off some Crimson Wave tech that looked very familiar and then thinking about an old thing she built and then thought she had destroyed all traces of, but apparently maybe not. <gasps> um, is this close enough to being confronted by my shame? <laughs> Ooh, possibly. Let me read the text of your move again, just to be sure. Because <laughs> I know it's going to come up. Uh, when you're confronted by your shame... I have to either mark a condition or shift danger up and superior down. I think it's still, like, you're not positive at this point, so I'll let you, yeah. so I'll let you skirt around that one for now. Okay. But it is a growing certainty that this will become something I must face. It's a growing suspicion, for sure. Okay, so, yeah, we can get a tour, I guess. Maybe it should be those of us that have not already been on a tour, uh, and Bane Raven and Queen Bee can do some external scouting. They're also both the main people who can get high up buildings easily. That's true. Good point. I guess the other question is, when do we want to do this? So you are currently on Tuesday of the current week. So we should try to arrange the tour as soon as possible. Do you think we can get sorted for tomorrow? I could probably ask. I don't see why not. I think between your dad and Papaya, it's, we can probably do it. Yeah. Uh, and we can do the heist right afterwards. Same night? Definitely same night. Definitely same night. You never want to let too much stuff change between the casing and the actual heist. Mm-hmm. Good point. Uh, Cass, are, are you going to come with us for the this tour? Uh, do you think you should be inside or outside? Um, I think... I'd probably be able to help more inside the building. Yeah, there's probably more techie things inside that you'd want to get the sense of. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, so with that, I think you've got enough set up here that you will be able to 
call your meeting there, um, go home for the evening, and psych yourself up for the next day. Hey there, everyone. Aaron here. I hope you're enjoying the very first guest episode of Arc 2 so far. Ah! This is actually going to be a two-part guest episode. So Alice Kira is actually going to be back next episode as well as the team carries out their full shenanigan-filled Ocean's Eleven-style plan to take on the Crimson Signal building. And it's it's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> I really love what Alice brought to these episodes. I am also more than happy to facilitate fair ongoing plan to appear in every Masks podcast at least once. Uh, this is also a fun coincidence because Faye also appeared over on Otherware in recent months as a guest for a short heist plotline, and that happened 100% independent of this, so <laughs> I really, I really love that. A very different sort of character that Alice plays in that one, but again, that's one that you should go over to Otherware in here at some point. Hashtag listen to Otherware. But anyway, I want to keep this break pretty short since this is a pretty long episode. Uh, so I'll just very briefly remind y'all that uh, we have a Patreon, yay! And you can support us there and all that we do to make this show happen. Uh, it's over at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. And if, uh, if you support at the $5 level or more, you can get your name shouted out on the podcast like these lovely folks. Sea Dog 09 Icicle Prism, Rain Crystal, Pike, Lady Plague, Blake1995, Noreen, Circus, Dana Alexa, hi Dana, and Sensei1477. Thank you so much to everyone who helps keep the show going and being as high quality as it can be. Just ever, ever, ever grateful for that. And before we get back to the team casing the joint, I will share with you some ads for a couple of great shows that you should check out. First is one of our always lovely Big A Roll Dice partner shows, The Eternity Archives, and also one of our new friend Masks podcasts, Delinquent Comics. Always glad to promote new, new Masks shows, so definitely just just go listen to all of them. You like this show, you like the other Masks shows, it's another Masks show, go listen to it. So enjoy these great advertisements, and then we will jump right back to the show. It takes boundless courage to look normal in the eye and destroy it. But we must. Welcome to the Eternity Archives. We're going to be playing Heroic Chord. Amilta, a world that is recovering from a century-old apocalypse. There isn't any war here. There are barely countries here. Zen looks like she has experienced something profound. Rill's whole thing is they don't have a sense of self. They do what they think others want them to do. So we wake up and Rill just isn't there. This is a dragon. And just as you come across it, it lifts its head to look at you. So yeah, I'm going to play him a little song about how magic the sword is. I think I might try and cast Advancing Silent. Sunlight water? Hunting green? Sunlight armor. As the music is playing, you can um, see ripples in the air that have almost like a slight shimmer in them, emanating from her lute. Do you remember the beauty and the things that you fear? This is the Eternity Archives. Calling all citizens of Halcyon City! The newest generation of heroes are now painting the pages of Delinquent Comics, an actual play podcast in the game world of Masks, a new generation. Join our heroes as they struggle to build a team and save the city. Can Titan escape the shadow of his mentor burnout? Is Soul's overwhelming power too dangerous to control? Will Muse discover her past? And how does White Knight stomach all those strange snacks? Listen to Delinquent Comics to find out at allportsopen.com, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever podcasts are found. New issues become available to all citizens every other Monday. And I'm just gonna <laughs> jump us forward through the next day, unless anybody has anything like more preparation oriented that they want to add before we head to this tour setup. Not really, just more clothes shopping. 
Yeah. <laughs> More movie watching for Jaden as well. <laughs> How many Oceans movies have you watched so far? <laughs> um, too many. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're just all like, kind of meshing up in his head at this point, but he loves every single one of them. I think Valerie is going to find pictures from the show and see if she can use her transformation powers to see if she can make herself look like Lady Luminous. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, so are you going as like a transformed Lady Luminous? Yes. Oh, good. But like a color swap. So like it's all dark grays and black <laughs> instead of the white. Yeah, or just straight up going as Lady Luminous and you have another member of the Fort MacArthur Club to back your identity yes, up. Yes, exactly. That was, that was my thinking is... <laughs> oh my god. I figure it would probably be, you know, like if you tried to make a version of someone in a game character creator, you could get close enough that it... it <laughs> You know, so <laughs> so like if you happen to run into someone who really does know her better, you might have to roll to make that work. Mm -hmm. And I probably would not sound the same. Oh yeah, enough that like if there's pictures or video taken, <laughs> it could implicate Diana. I think Cass probably just talked to her parents about having a sleepover at Karen's house or something to cover mm -hmm. why she's not going to be home until the next day because she's not going to show back up at like three in the morning yeah, that's absolutely the excuse that you all can give as well for where you are as well uh because karen has a, a large enough suite to host a slumber party as a fun bookkeeping thing y'all were so nice and cool in that meeting that you all have influence over cast now <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> all right sounds good <laughs> can i can i give influence to Pollux, because I think Jaden thought they were cool. <laughs> um, is that a um, thing? Uh, Polly's not an individual character. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Cass an um, influence over Jaden, though, because he still thinks that was pretty damn cool. Oh, thank you. Cute. Yeah, uh, fortunately, Valerie got all of her angst about having to meet new people when Lucia showed up. <laughs> <laughs> all right so it is now wednesday so i'm going to assume that uh lucia didn't have to convince her father too much to like set up a tour for her school school friends he was probably like a little like uh to hear about crimson signal again but he knows that uh if it's for his daughter's school then it's probably worthwhile and worth doing and it's easy enough for him to set up so he, he does that no problem for you He's the best. <laughs> and then you all find yourselves after school. Um, let's, I guess, probably just a few hours after school. Uh, it's near the end of the day for however long Crimson Signal is open to the public, but just enough time for one or two last uh, cursory building tours. So all of you except Angie and Queen Bee are going inside then? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and Karen's going inside as well. And I guess, who all is transforming for this? And are you showing up at the building transformed? I'm going to transform. Lucia's going to transform too. Um, Jaden isn't going to transform. Yeah, Valerie is going to transform and then use her powers to disguise herself. Lucia shifted down in mundane and up in savior. I'll also ask Alice, do you think Cass has any hard light technology that would give her a transformation as well? And if so, would she use it? Cass does have a transformation, but she's not using it here. Okay. Good to know. So I shifted mundane up to minus one. And uh, <laughs> I shifted freak down because I'm trying to be inconspicuous. Mm-hmm. I'm shifting mundane down to minus one and freak up because I'm trying to use my powers. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, uh, before I do the shift, I was wondering if uh, it would, since we need to be inconspicuous, it wouldn't make sense to show up as Alan. But, or is it because we have to climb? Yeah, because you have to climb. <laughs> okay, no, then I'll just uh, lower Savior and raise Freak. Okay. Also, I guess it 
raising freak does make sense because this is the power that Phoebe just thinks is too weird to use. Mm hmm. Yeah, it works for both senses of the word for in her head. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, and if anybody has any. <laughs> Any appearance details that we haven't discussed already, um, feel free to mention them now. Uh, yes. Angie is dressed in, like, business casual wear. So she's got, like, you know, a pencil skirt and, like, a blouse with, like, really big jewelry that, like, women in CEO positions tend to wear for some reason. And her hair's in a bun, and she's wearing glasses and, like, big earrings. Mm -hmm. This is giving, uh, like, season one Sailor Moon, where she would, like, transform into just outfits <laughs> for no reason. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where I got the <laughs> inspiration. I love that. I love it. Um, even though she's transformed, Lucia, or I guess Trixie, Trixie makes sure that she is, like, as inconspicuous as possible. So she's wearing just, like, beat-up tennis shoes, jeans, like, a hoodie. Technically, yes, she still has, like, the red-pink eyes and the glitter and sparkles all over her cheeks. But she has her hood, like, kind of, like, pulled up a little bit. Like, she... Well, actually, no, that's very conspicuous. She just <laughs> looks like a teenager with glitter on her face. Yeah, she just looks like a very <laughs> extra teenager. Extra teenager, yeah. But the idea is to try to look like I'm a kid on a school trip. Don't talk to me <laughs> as possible. <laughs> Jaden is, he didn't transform, but he is, his outfit is a bit more different than usual. He usually wears like really brightly colored hoodies and sweaters and stuff like that. But today, because of all of the heist movies he's been watching, he knows they have to wear black, you know? Black is always the inconspicuous color. So everything he's wearing right now is black. He's wearing like black skinny jeans, black trainers, and a black, um, I'm trying to think, it's still um, a sweat, a hoodie that's like, has like a band print on it. Is it one of those weird like black on black prints? Oh, no, 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 no. I love this emo <laughs> Jaden. I love this like hot topic Jaden. Yeah, this hot topic Jaden. Um, does Zero Degrees have mm -hmm. merch? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. He even canonically has sweaters. <laughs> okay, cool. He's wearing a black Zero Degrees hoodie like zero degrees written in like maybe white and baby blue on the front but everything else is black <laughs> yeah maybe it has like a dark blue gradient along the bottom yeah in his mind Jaden thinks he's a, he looks so inconspicuous <laughs> he thinks he could stealth anyone <laughs> in the, the middle of the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jaden isn't the brightest <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> no it's lovely <laughs> He also looks like he, he's enthusiastic to be at Crimson Signal. He's repping one of their top idols. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So you all are going on more or less sort of a similar tour that Angie and Queen Bee were on. It's not as extensive as the one they were on. Like, they're not going to see, like, all of the development areas that they saw, but they will, like, at least fly by those areas. And they will see the product, like, show floor with the selfie stage and everything that was there in their tour. What are some like highlight spots that you all would like to like spot, think like look around at things at basically? If I can notice anything like that, any kind of like keypads and stuff like that, that might be needed to unlock doors. Something I would try and like keep an eye out for and like possible exit routes and cameras, I guess is another thing. Okay. I'm trying to think whether assess or industry espionage would be best for this. Assess might be good, actually, because, like, you're looking for things that you can use later and, like, yeah. what would be most vulnerable to, like, you being able to get through it, that kind of thing. Yeah, and they're both equally terrible for me anyway, so, <laughs> stat-wise. But I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> oh. Oh, rip. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's a five and you don't have any team points. So, Jaden, I think you're just a little too, like, hype on your heist movie energy, and you're not, like, actually looking very closely. You're just kind of excited to be there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anything else? You'll probably see, like, some basics. Like, you'll notice, like, oh, like, some doors have just regular locks on them. Those should just be fine to, like, pick or whatever. But you don't get a great look at anything that might have a more involved security. Yeah. I won't give you a condition, because Jaden gains conditions way too often. 
<laughs> I mean, I do play a Nova. I mean, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> How about anyone else? Cass is going to be keeping an eye out, see if she can see any indications of what sort of computer situation they have. Like if they have a company internet that's only accessible from inside the building, or if it's also has like a connection to the extranet. And also, since her new friend, friend, enemies, rivals, maybe something, we'll find out, <laughs> uh, said that Ashley's dad might work for them. She's going to keep her eyes out for like a company directory. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, um, and I think you have like something that would help you on at least part of that because you have your uh, your scientific, scientific insight. insight move, right? Yes. Uh, scientific insight, you've achieved mastery over a field of science and technology. Name it. I put computers. And whenever I assess the situation and my field is directly relevant, I get a single follow-up question of any kind. Okay. So I think that's going to be very useful as you like... Like, you don't get a very long look at anything, like, computery, but you mm -hmm. do, like, pass by, like, places where there are, like, some public terminals where people can look at information about the company. So I think you would definitely get an opportunity, at least, to check out, like, your question about the internet or the extranet there, and you would be able to find a company directory there if you're able to roll well on this. So I'm going to get you to cool. uh, assess the situation as well. Awesome. Yay! More potential! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> No, this is great. That's all according to plan. Three more <laughs> rolls and I'll have my moment yeah, of truth. Yeah, like by the next session, <laughs> um, Alice will have completely leveled her character. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is I was planning to do end of session at the end of this session. So we can mm -hmm. do that. And then you'll actually have team points for the heist. <laughs> yeah. And my move still goes off even if I miss. Oh, th that's true. So these, like, whatever, like, tour terminals are really not very useful at all. There's nothing, like, very connected that's going to be uh, juicy for you. But what is your follow-up question that you would like? Okay, uh, so let me word this. What would be the easiest access point to not critical systems, but, like, the primary systems for the company? When you look through, like, a site map or the just a general, like, lay of how the systems are set up, like, again, mm -hmm. it's very public facing, but I think you can tell that, like, the more computery areas of the building they would have more information are probably going to be in the R&D area. So if you can get in there, you'll probably get access to a lot more. Okay. Since it is a relatively simple question, I'll say that it does look like there is a company internet. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, nothing beyond that, really. It's a very superficial tour. Okay. And uh, how about, uh, let's say, uh, Valerie, what are you looking for as you're going through the building? So Lady Luminous, in, in heavy air quotes, is <laughs> being um, extra bratty and extra obnoxious, like asking lots of questions about... Crimson Signal products and like, you know, don't you don't you have anything that you can show us that, you know, that's not public? You know, the Fort MacArthur Idol Club is very competitive and we need every edge that we can get. And I'm sure that there's something you can show me. Uh, and she's not trying to get information so much as just trying to make sure that she's the center of attention. Oh, that sounds like a good provoke then. Yeah. So that anyone is paying attention to her and not to her teammates. Okay, and I'm gonna say you get a plus one on this because you're using your disguise to keep the attention on you as well. So you can roll plus superior. There's so much superior for this, oh my god. Oh no! Oh my, <laughs> this is, that's snake this is eyes. So, oh, this is going no. so bad. <laughs> that is snake eyes plus two. I was like wondering how, how the math. <laughs> you're being too annoying. Yeah, like, what is Valerie's? <laughs> like, even a, a plus two only takes that to a four. It's okay, everyone. We're just getting all of this out of the way so that when we actually <laughs> break into the building, yes. we'll have all our good rolls. <laughs> Save in our good rolls. <laughs> and I think the, the person who's giving you this tour is just getting increasingly irritated with you because this is not Papaya who's giving the tour this time. That was for the fancy people. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just, you've got like crimson signal employee 2b or whoever who's like in their like standard like red shirt black vest combo and they're like i 
miss, I just work here. I, t I can't show you anything that hasn't been approved by the people who set the tour up. I only- I can show you what I can show you. It's- it's cool stuff, I promise you. It's- I'm sure it's fine for whatever your school needs. It's just- to- to stop- hey! <laughs> just- I'm gonna- we'll stop the tour if you keep this up. <laughs> uh, I think having to take a condition makes sense here as well. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so you take a condition and I think the- their attention is on you. But like they're not like <laughs> not paying attention to the others. They're yeah. they're kind of like suspicious of this whole group at this mm -hmm. point. Like not in terms of like oh you're trying to pull something, but just in the sense of like you all came as a group for this tour. I hate all of you equally because yes. of your, whoever is your representative. <laughs> Very fair. I also marked <laughs> guilty because I'm you know <laughs> harassing some low level worker at their day job because I'm at a company. Sure. <laughs> Be nice to interns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not being nice to the intern, and so I'm marking guilty. Yeah, I think Karen's probably trying to smooth over the situation a little bit and be and apologize for you, but uh, it's only just enough to keep the tour going and not not enough to like get you anything useful. Okay, who haven't we gone to yet? Are we just is it just the outside people? Or I guess Lucia, have you done anything yet? I was like sitting here trying to think. I think if anything, she's just like trying to pay attention to the actual layout and like kind of memorize like, okay, you know, like, yes, we have the maps, we have the blueprints and everything, but like, where are like landmarks? Where are distinguishing mm -hmm. features? Like, yeah, basically trying to map out the quickest path of like entrance to all the places that they want to go because we're going to have a limited time. I think that makes sense. Maybe you are looking for the cameras because they weren't on the plan. Exactly, exactly. Things like just making sure, trying to map out everything in my mind. Fair enough. So I think that's going to be another assess. Okay. And that's superior, yes, yes. Right. And I can't remember, did I give you a plus one to anything or did you just got the plans, I think? I just got the plans, which is honestly enough. <laughs> you know what? Because <laughs> I want something to go right, I am going to give you a plus one because you you got the plans and because you got them early, you probably had the most time to look over them. So you would be able to match what you know about the plans to the layout that you're seeing. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That tracks. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. Lucia coming through. Trixie coming 14. through, rather. I know, right? Listen, I built this character for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> she has a three superior and she's going to use it. <laughs> you know it. Okay. Uh... So you got a 14, by the way. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, 14. Okay. Oh, man. So on assess, you get two questions. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I actually get three because I have questions. Oh, yeah, up, yeah that's right. Mind. You do. Yeah, okay. So you get your two um... questions. What here is the greatest danger? Ooh, spicy question. <laughs> right? I thought that was like a good little up to interpretation question. <laughs> yeah, I think what I'm going to say is uh, you're looking for things that will generally be dangerous to you on the heist. And what you notice is you do see like locations of cameras. They are, of course, spread throughout the building and you will have to look out for them. But I think you do notice generally where they tend to be placed and what patterns they tend to move with. You notice they have the same kind of arcing pattern to them wherever you go. So it should be fairly easy to like predict how they're gonna move and how you can avoid their range. And also a danger that you'll be wanting to avoid is the security guards. Something you notice about the security guards is not only do they have like standard security guard gear, like they have guns and tasers and whatnot, they also have these wristbands on and you would recognize these wristbands as personal anti-power shielding wristbands okay that's so cool that's really cute i'm so into that yeah like you you know that you've seen these at like idol yeah. concerts like the security at concerts will often have them so you know what these look like Mm-hmm. okay i love that for us um they do take a little bit to activate. Mm -hmm. You have a, an opportunity to get like an attack in before they activate, but once they're up, it's hard to get past them. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask, technically the question is like, 
who here is the most vulnerable to me, but since I feel like I'm scoping out the building, I think what here is the most vulnerable to me is kind of the best way to phrase that. Once again, very loose interpretation, but I don't know. Just like out of all of the plans we have and all the rooms we want to hit, which I did mm-hmm. write down, if that's helpful. I think I'll say probably if we do want to make it a who, it would be whoever is in charge of the security cameras because your power is very much based on controlling the visuals. So you would be the most suited to getting past any cameras and like disabling them. Mm, Okay, 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 okay. That makes sense. And then what is the best way in, and I'm going to say specifically for the secret room? Hmm. Definitely you'll need to take care of the security guard because there's always like at least a guard or two around that door. Mm -hmm. Basically, as far as you can tell, you need to take that guard out. And from what little you can see through the little window in the door, it looks like there's another door further in that might have a stronger like set of security locks on it. Okay. So the best way in slash past would be one, take out the guards or guard however many are there when you get there. And Mm -hmm. to have a plan for whatever locks you might encounter further in. Okay. And it looks like it's a digital lock, right? It's hard to tell from this distance. That's fair. It looks like there's a big black box over the door and that usually isn't good. (laughs) Okay, that makes sense. And those are all the questions that I have. All right. You got a lot. (laughs) I think you probably got the most out of anyone. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, uh, it's like she's delinquent or something. Crazy. <laughs> We've got the three stooges and then a professional criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like I said, I knew I was ready for this. <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> okay, and in that case, I think we can now go out to the, the outside t- outside team. Team outside. <laughs> how, are, how are y'all handling things out here? Um... I'm walking around, like, adjusting my glasses in a way that I think makes me look like I'm smart and important, and just, like, stopping down to look down at my clipboard, and, like, sometimes I lift my phone and pretend I'm talking on it, and I'm like, sell, right now, and then I pretend to hang up, and then (laughs) just stuff like that, (laughs) trying to blend in with uh, the daily business folk. Okay. And is there anything in particular that you're on the lookout for or trying to do that you're using your sneaking powers to get you to? In particular, I'm trying to keep an eye out for things like security guard shift changes. Like, I'm not sure how long we have, but just to see and uh, also maybe see the best entrance that we can sneak in from the ground level. Mm. I assume that's probably an industry espionage role. I think it probably would be an industry espionage in this case, just because the questions are a little more suited to what you're looking for. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, it's another hit. All right. You got an eight, so that would only be a a nine with the plus one uh, that you would have gotten to your sneaking. (laughs) Okay. But even so, you get uh, one from the list of questions. Okay, um, what here is most useful or valuable to me? Probably uh, the, I'm going to say the, the, you do manage to pick up on the security guard shift changes. You're out there long enough to see that they seem to go on an every, like, like, I don't know how long the tour is exactly, but you notice that, like, on the hour, let's say, that uh, somebody comes to relieve the other. So you're not sure how many hours each shift is, but you know that they seem to change over on the hour. Okay. Also, you notice that one of the sort of back entrance doors that is less well guarded is kind of on the opposite end of the building from where the secret area is. That seems to be like where more like there's some trees planted out back. Like there's a bunch of like, this is supposed to be sort of a like quote-unquote green area of downtown to make Crimson Signal look like a responsible environmental company. Right, right. And there's a decent number of these trees planted towards that side of the building that you could, one, hide behind, and two, make the patrols a little more awkward. Okay. I'm just gonna take some pictures with my phone in a discreet way where I look like I'm looking at my phone 
to text, but I'm actually just taking a bunch of pictures. <laughs> sure. Alrighty then. And how about Queen Bee? You said you were heading for the roof, right? Yes. I've taken a page from Angie's book, so I'm wearing a sharp black pantsuit with a mustard shirt. And I'm just uh, nonchalantly climbing up. Well, <laughs> as soon as I get the impression that nobody's looking. All right. I'm going to ask for an Unleash Your Powers on this, actually, because this is a very tall building, even for you. Okay. Unleashing? Yes. All right. So you got a seven on that. That's not bad. So on a seven to nine, uh, you can either mark a condition or the GM will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. Which would you prefer? I think I'd rather mark a condition in this case. That sounds good. Because I'd like to take a little time to see if I can peek in, in some windows, especially at the 13th floor. And I'm taking sure, sure. afraid because I've never been so high up. Yeah, it's, again, it's a 15-story building, uh, and the top part of the building even is quite tall in and of itself. So you're you're a little high up. <laughs> it is worrying. But you do manage to make it up there. You you climb in like the shadow of the building. You make sure people aren't watching you. You duck into like the sides of like windows if you think someone's about to spy you, and you manage to make it up to the top. And on the top, you see the roof is kind of sectioned, it looks like. And you would have seen this in the plans, too, that it looks like it has the ability to open up if the sections pull back and down. But there is also, like, transparent areas of the roof up top so that, like, sunlight can still come in. It seems like those areas are, like, more like a plastic than a glass since they do have to be able to retract in without breaking. But it is a very like strong plastic material like it's probably you would reckon probably like a bulletproof type of plastic or something that's hard to break and is there anything in particular on the inside of that space that you're looking for well if there is any sort of uh, access it, it's probably either guarded or locked but i want to see if there's any way to get in from the roof uh there is like a trap door type place up here and it isn't guarded just because it is so really hard to get up here for a normal person. It does seem like the trapdoor is locked from the outside, but it's, it doesn't seem like it's like as complex a lock as some of the things in the building probably are. Like, it's just a standard lock. Hmm. So this could be an entry point. Mm -hmm. Or an exit point, if need be. <laughs> yes. Are there cameras or anything like that? Um, a decent number, not as many, because this area isn't really meant to be the most, like, secure part of the building. This is, like, a party area. So, like, just enough to, like, watch out for, like, I don't know, rabble-rousers or anything. Hmm. <laughs> but not a ton. There are blind spots that you're able to find. Okay. I'm giving you all this because I don't want to make an another person possibly <laughs> fail <laughs> at the assess the situation. And you already rolled well on your Unleash Your Powers. I'm not going to jinx it. Okay, this is pretty useful. There's no other person up here, right? No, not right now, no. This is uh, too high, and this roof is, again, like a temporary roof, so generally it would be unsafe for people to be posted up here. Okay, then I guess uh, all I have to do now is to call the bees there and make sure they just hunker down until night. Okay, this will definitely be another Unleash Your Powers then, because, again, the bees have to come up quite high and quite far. <laughs> oh, bees. Yes. That's an eight. Uh, so would you like to mark another condition, or...? I'm afraid it's the only way I can have them to stay all night. So, and I'm marking guilty, because uh, I hope we don't get too cold. All right. <laughs> so we'll just have to make sure you're not doing too much of the uh, assessing the situation after this. Okay, and I think I'm going to let everybody kind of finish everything up here without further issue. Like, again, Valerie slash quote-unquote Lady Luminous, you've ticked off the tour organizers, so they're probably taking you out a little faster than they would normally, but they're not, like, kicking you out. They're just like, mm -hmm. oh, fine, we're done. Okay, thank you for coming to, to tour the Crimson Signal today. Have a wonderful <laughs> day. Goodbye. Please leave. Well, all right. I suppose we will. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for the tour. <laughs> yeah, Karen calls out over her shoulder. You did a very good job under the circumstances. Yeah, no, really good tour. Really, really good tour. And Lucia's like looking over her notes and her phone. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, Cass is just silently wording with her mouth, I am so sorry about her. (laughs) (laughs) Which seems like a very practiced thing that she might have to do a lot for some reason. (laughs) It's clear that he's not, like, believing any of you. He's, like, he's not paid enough to give anyone the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very fair. That's extremely fair. And uh, Queen Bee manages to get down from the building okay. Angie is not noticed by anybody because uh, her important businesswoman roleplay is just that good. (laughs) So you all manage to meet up again, uh, let's say probably near the front of the building somewhere. The tour was actually really fun. Um, Didn't really notice anything on my end. I I think I may have overdone it. Um, Yeah, you seem pretty upset. Maybe, but I was able to get a lot of good stuff because of it. Like, I think I kind of know the things that we should prioritize. I definitely made, like, mental notes of where all the cameras are. And Lucia turns to Cass. And I think I might need you for the secret room. Okay. Uh, If we can get into the R&D section, I should be able to get control over the main system. It'll make the whole thing a lot easier. Awesome, awesome. Speaking of dividing and conquering, I think if you take care of R&D, I should be in charge of taking out the cameras. And then everybody else, once that's all taken care of, can kind of run free and search, I think. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. And uh, we might have uh, a good exit point on the roof. There's a trapdoor and it's uh, not guarded. That could be useful. Especially if we end up going like, I mean, we could go top down or we could go bottom up. It depends on how the people who can't fly or jump real good can get up or down the building. There is a good door that might be a good entrance and exit point um, where a bunch of trees are. And then I show everyone the pictures I took. Oh. And the guards seem to change shifts about every hour, but I'm not sure how many guards are there or if there'll be less shift changes at night. Um. I think I'm, I might be able to slip past a few of the guards as well without being seen. So I could take that route. I'm not as sneaky as everyone else, I don't think. I believe in your sneaking abilities, Jaden. We'll definitely be able to find use for you. Don't feel bad. And she like pats his shoulder awkwardly. We'll find your spot. And remember, you could be our getaway guy. That's true. I could be. I really want to see the flaming chariot. I've never done it before, but I could i think all right are we ready everybody coming back later oh yes yeah. I think so yeah i think so yeah i'm ready all right and karen puts her hand in the middle like she did in like the first <laughs> club meeting the second episode <laughs> Jaden puts his hand in as well yeah i just put in <laughs> yeah. real quick hand in yeah hand in valerie does without hesitation this time <laughs> oh does Cass put her hand in um, yeah, Cass probably, like, looks to the others to make sure that it's okay, because she's not technically part of the club. Is this a case where we all, like, turn and look at her? Like, we're waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Cute. <laughs> yeah, I think when everyone looks at her, she's like, thrusts her hand in maybe a little Aww. too hard. <laughs> now she's keeping... Okay, everyone. On three... Go, Go Rivers! <laughs> <laughs> we didn't count to three. Lucia had no idea what was supposed to be said, so she just <laughs> moved her hand. Lucia, <laughs> yeah. we might say, like, Go Rhythmics. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. And thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at QueenBE1516871. Lucia Moore slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Liv in a Day. And special guest character Cassandra Tora was played by Alice Lily Kira, who can be found on Twitter at Magical Girl Kira. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, 
whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering was done by myself, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. Poly.ux's theme was Time to Go to Space Now by Komiku, and the Crimson Signal lobby music was Elevator 6, a Creative Commons track by Stevia Sphere. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.